<clears throat> here we are. Hi, everyone. Dan here with the Designer Show on with Renee, Robin, and John. Hey, guys, how are you today? Hi. Doing well. Great. How are you guys? It's been a long time. Has been a while. Yeah. So, yeah, the month goes by fast. Well, what well, we got Kevin. Been? A little oh, over yeah. a month. Oh, there's Kevin. Kevin is joining yeah. us. <laughs> hey, Kevin. <laughs> hey, hi, everybody? Kevin. Hello, everybody. Hi, Kevin. Looks like you uh, parked somewhere and you're doing Hello. something in a car. I am in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere land. All right. Gotta love it. <laughs> so, are we in the same vicinity, same vicinity as nor of nowhere, <laughs> Kevin? <laughs> you know, that, that joke was never going to work from the start. Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Well, well, good morning, everyone. And everyone joining us, thank you for uh, joining us. And uh, we'll see if we can have a little fun here. As you notice, we tend to do here, uh, talking about some of the new features in Chief Architect. So I don't know if you guys caught any of uh, Chief's presentation yesterday. I caught just the last few minutes of it. Did, did you, any of I, you? I did not. Nope. They no. posted it's too late. Yeah. yeah, I tried to no. join live, but I just I had too much going on. So, um, but here we are. We'll talk about it. Our, we talk about it better anyway. So we'll have more fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I don't really have much to go over today uh, as far as new things going on. I know, Renee, you've got a couple of symbol packs you can talk about when you do your deck, talk about the deck railing a little bit. Um, other than that, how's everybody else been? What have you been doing all month? I've been traveling. Well, John, you're stopped, always stopped traveling, and, so that's nothing. Stopped and saw Bruce. Stopped and saw Bruce in Canton uh, a couple weeks ago. Saw, I yeah, saw you saw that. Parker, Somebody, too. I love yeah, yeah, Parker yeah, and Parker Chris. And I got to see them. Yeah. That so was we're, fabulous. We're talking about yeah. some of the people that we saw at the summit, which we, which really only been five weeks since the summit ended. So it, right. it seems like a lot longer, but yeah, I've been in a real, I've been in a real fun. Well, John, I mean, I just been oh, bleh, you know. it's real <laughs> crappy weather in Minnesota. And it's finally, finally today, we're going to be at the coast of 50. Uh, we'll be in the seventies next week. Finally, right. we haven't been nice. out of the forties all month. It's like, bleh. anyway, yeah. Kind of like, kind of like living. In I had a long I'm conversation at, with um, at this John comment. Jones yesterday. I was on his. <laughs> couldn't, take couldn't take the presenter's the presenter voice. <laughs> who who oh. was presenting yesterday? <laughs> oh, oh, at chief the chief architect people. Um, yeah, I don't remember his name, but yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, we better get into it too. We don't want Sorry, to I interrupted you too much. That's okay, Robin. What were you saying? Oh, I was on um, John Jones's um, podcast yesterday. He was on a podcast. It was on Clubhouse. We had a really nice conversation. I don't think it was yesterday. I think it was Wednesday. So that was really fun. Um, if you, he has a nice architectural group of people, and he was kind enough to allow me to speak as an as a designer. So um, it was really fun. It was fun to cool. hang out with some people. So, yeah. Awesome. I have been having lots. I have had lots of questions of pe from people who want to know when registration is going to open up for our next summit. Uh, soon, it's all it's all <laughs> ready to go. I just have to get to get to it. Like I say, I've been in Funk last month. I haven't been working that hard, so got it. So there well, you after go. The summit, after the summit, <laughs> oh, that's, that's understandable. Brutal honesty here. Um, yeah, it's been tough. It's been a tough uh, month for me. Uh, just trying to get motivated. You know, one of the things I found out though, I think um, I, I finally went to the eye doctor yesterday and God, I tell you, when I work in front of my computer, I get by noon, I'm just like shot, just toast. So I went to the eye doctor and found out that my left eye is like a, I need like, I don't wear glasses other than reading glasses. So this side is like a 1.25. This is like a 2.25. So, so I'm, so now I'm getting fatigued. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so I get I get to get a prescription reading glasses. Does, does anybody w watching this feed wear those blue blue blocker glasses? I do. And do they I, actually work? They do. Yeah, they do. I, I have them right here. Coming from the so. man who says that his eyes are shot by noon. Yeah. Well, they, then I have to switch to these. So and they look kind of yellow here, but uh, they do make the screen a little bit uh, more tender. 
uh, plus you can adjust in your in your uh, uh, settings for your uh, computer mm -hmm. under uh, I'll show it again I've shown this before but I'll show it again real quick on display settings oops let me get to this and we'll show my screen I'll be right back. come in here get over here there we go so under display settings let me turn that on John, can you do that? Uh, yeah, I'm working on it. I know. I, I tend to work on one you, screen. I don't see your screen's not up here for me to, to, to put it up. I, I could do it. I could do it. Present, share screen. And I'm going to go entire screen, this screen, share. There we go. Um, so you should see my screen now. So when you go to your display settings, so if you're Windows, just go to your search and type display settings. There's a little thing here called nightlight settings. So when you turn that on, I have mine set to go on later at night, but you can turn it on all day if you want to. It, it, it does tone your screen down quite a bit. It makes it kind of yellowish so that it is really helpful for the eyeballs. So when you're in there, uh, you won't, if you, if you have that on when you're trying to watch a movie, the, the people in the movie will look kind of goofy, but I don't, other than that, I don't, great. I don't like using that because it, it's not bright enough for me. So I, I can't use that. I need really oh. bright light. So, so yeah, okay. But so it would it would be nice if I could do something like that and it still work. But yeah, got it. Okay. Anyway, let's uh, let's jump into since Kevin has made it on time and before he <laughs> loses his internet connection, Kevin, you were going to discuss a little bit about. Uh, let me close that. You were going to talk a little bit about imposter syndrome. All right, we had Last talked about that at the summit. Yeah. Can everybody hear me okay? Is this yeah. all right? Yep. You sound great. Awesome. I feel great too. Thank you. Um, good. So, you look yeah, good. I did. <laughs> Feeling good. Um, yeah, I did want to talk. I do want to talk a little bit about that. It was a really interesting conversation. It was, it was founded out of. Um, uh, late night uh, merriment and mayhem, and uh, we had uh, as a lot of things happen at the summit or at any any of these events. Uh, once the classroom time ends, we find ourselves um, standing around. I don't know the kitchen table, the bar, another table, or just geeking out in in front of our computers. But that's what makes the summit so special, and and uh, our time together is so special. These things that come out of it. But this came out of it um, as a conversation about insecurities and uh and the things that we face and it really was interesting as the conversation went on and then um we discussed it again the next day with the full group to find the common thread and the commonality to um what everybody was feeling having to do with uh insecurities the imposter syndrome is is a real psychological uh what, what do you call it? Uh, syndrome. Uh, it's something I'm doing. Uh, hey, Renee, I'm doing the um thing. I've got to quit that. Uh, <laughs> and I did it again. <laughs> it, well, you guys just keep count and see how many times it is. And I don't know. I'll have to take a shot for each time or something. <laughs> Are we going to count out loud? Or? I like that. Let's do that. Yeah, That'll be yeah. Fun. <laughs> yeah, please Just interrupt you every time you do it. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. That'd be great. I am I am practicing on doing that less since uh, Renee gave me some abuse about it last time. Impos imposter syndrome is something that is well proven and something that many of us experience without knowing what it is that we're experiencing. Maybe you've seen, maybe you felt this in a situation where you know you know what you're doing. You feel like you know what you're doing, you think you know what you're doing, and you're conveying that to someone or some group or or maybe just yourself. You're working on a plan, you're working on a design, and you suddenly feel like, I, I, I know that I sell myself doing this service. I know that people trust me to do this service, but sometimes I don't trust myself to do this service. Am I, am I failing at this? Am I not as good as I thought I was, or maybe not as good as I'm presenting to people, am, am I, where does this come from? Why am I feeling this way? And some of it can go on for years. Some of it is just a brief moment, but we all feel it at some point. And when we discuss this in that room, 
a lot of people appreciated the the common thread to that. It can manifest itself um, in insecurities or guilt or uh, what would it be? Uh, just, just the inability to really be able to put your best foot forward. And it originates in anything from a, fe a, a feeling of a lack of uh, formal education for what you're doing to a lack of confidence to, it could be anything from the last time someone uh, told you no or declined an offer or whatever that might be. The interesting part about it is that we all feel it. And the challenge is how do you, how do you compensate for it? How do you overcome it? And what do you do to do that? It could be, it could, it could have originated with the way you grew up. I hate to say it's a, you know, mommy syndrome or something, but a family that pushed perfectionism or, or possibly uh, was overly critical or overly demanding can bring about these feelings later on in our lives. But sometimes it's just that we don't feel like we're top of the class and, 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 we wish we were more confident about what we do. My comment to you, to any of you, is that the fact that you're here today and the fact that you're um, signing on to better yourself in a group chat like this already says that you're not giving yourself enough credit if you feel this way. People that are seeking to better themselves and their abilities, whether they're looking at Renee's uh, unbelievable uh, creativity when it comes to rendering or symbols or Robin's deep knowledge of, of um, kitchens and baths or whatever it might be. Uh, if you are here, you're already working to better yourselves in that. So feel some confidence in that. Take some confidence with you. John Jones is saying he had it for years and years and never felt like a real architect. I see that a lot. Uh, I, I have talked to people a lot about that. It, the whole idea of the imposter syndrome is that you feel like an imposter. You're going through the motions, but you feel like maybe everyone else knows it better than you do. And I think if you took a poll, if everyone felt the same way that everyone else knows it better than you do, then you're right there with them. You're doing, you're doing great. You're, 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 you're accomplishing what you need to accomplish. A lot of times what we need more than anything is an understanding of what we're going through and um, a supporting community to help us through it. I'm not sure why Dan picked this particular topic as kind of a lead off topic, but there isn't a more supportive community than this one. So uh, take full advantage of that and every opportunity you can talk well, to the people within this community and you'll find that uh, we're all there for yeah. each other. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, and again, this is part of Kevin's business segment. So uh, if, if you weren't here last time, I did introduce Kevin. Um, he's the head of Arca, the, the art of design. He's the owner of the art of design, a former contractor, not just a plain old designer. Uh, no, you actually you're not. <laughs> That's the imposter syndrome that gets me a lot. Um, when people say, yeah, I'm just a designer. Okay. I'm not the contractor. I'm just a designer. Okay. Designers, you got the most important part of the freaking job. So um, embrace that and go with it because it's really super important. If you do a good design on a job, the job's going to go really well. And people really rely on your knowledge to do that. Same with contractors, contractors that don't charge for design services. They feel like they're, I, I, I went through this for a long time. I didn't feel like I was a good designer even though I really was a pretty good designer, because after so many years of experience in this industry, you get pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just like, it, it, go with it. I mean, you guys take your talents and, and you know what you're good at. So just run with it. If, um, if you want to get a nice little check-in on, on your skill sets and knowledge base, go help someone that's in need within this industry. You'll find that you know a lot more than you even give yourself credit for. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Oh um, by, by the way, Kevin, great job. You didn't say, um, one time after yeah. you. <laughs> I was going to say that was really good. 
<laughs> Good job. I'm just, I just, uh, I'm going to post a. No, a that's he wants to, a plumber. A plumber once that? told me uh, who grew up with me. I said the plumber once told me who grew up with me. I did not say I'm in between those two things. Uh oh, he's lagging out. Uh, he, I was in. We're losing. We're losing. Am I going? No, you're still here. <laughs> All right, one more thing, uh, and then we're gonna jump into. Am some I of gone? Those. No, you're good. No, you're here. You're good. We're gonna. Uh, there's a good book I read once called "Quiet: um, The Power of Introverts in a World That okay. Can't Stop Talking." Go to uh, go to uh, to Amazon and look for that. It's really a good book, and it'll it'll tell you a little bit about it. If you're, uh, I've always thought of myself as kind of outgoing, but I'm really an introvert. And I'm kind of in between. I go back and forth between that all the time. And this book kind of explains that and how you how we work with that. And that'll really help a lot with your imposter syndrome. So check it out. It's available on you audio. Know, there's, a, there's another really good book. It was written by, I think, two women from the Washington Post. But it's it's really it's called The Confidence Code. And it really is written more for um, women lack of confidence. So for but it, I think it's great for everybody. I think everybody should read it. But it did it helped me a lot when I, um, one of the things, I mean, I don't lack confidence, right? I mean, you guys kind of get that, right? I'm not this shy little wallflower. Um, but, um, you know, the, there's always that thing of being willing to ask for what your worth is. And um, one of the points that they made is that women will typically in reviews will ask for um, $5,000 less a year than men will. And I luckily had just read it just before I um, got my job as a full-time instructor and they were going to pay me, there was a range and they were paying me like in the lower half of the range. And I'm like, I have been teaching here part-time for how many years? So when they offered me the job, I kind of went pause and they said, are you accepting this? And I said, well, I'm accepting the job and not the pay. And I, so I asked for a number. They said, well, how much do you want? And I asked for a number and they ended up giving me $2,000 more than I asked for. So it meant that I really should have asked for a lot more than I asked Damn. for. Damn. <laughs> but I did get a lot more than they were originally willing to offer. Yeah. And then after that, <laughs> then I realized, wait a second, I'm not charging my clients enough. Yeah, good for and you. And that's when I raised my rates. And I almost doubled my rates by reading. And it was because I read that book. It's like, you know, I wasn't asking you? for my value. Cool. What's the name of that book again? The Confidence Code. Confidence Code. Guys, check that I out. I listened to it on tape. I listened to it while I was working in my garden. And I have to tell you, it was very valuable. I highly recommend it. Cool. Go for it, guys. All right. We got to move on here. Uh, thank you, Kevin. That was a good good explanation of that. And everybody, uh, it be fun to carry on this conversation in our online groups at some point. So let's move on to uh, what's new in X15. We did cover this a little bit last time. Um, we decided to stretch this out over three shows so that we could uh, get into, uh, uh, I'm saying ah uh, because my screens are all messed up. Now I'm trying to figure out where I'm at. <laughs> okay, so I need to go to, come on, Dan. Oh, John, I need you to control the damn show my screen thing. Are you doing that? I got it. All right, thank you. That's what I... That's what I'm looking at. Okay, so thank you guys. Uh, let's get into our our back to our list. So we did cover some things last time. I kind of highlighted those in yellow. Uh, let's go back to a couple of these things. So if we go to the, the Chief Architect X15 page, and if you're on the show page, you can click the link to go download this PDF, and you can go to the link to go to Chief Architect's X15 page. If you're not there, you could just go to chiefarchitect.com, go to their products, and you'll see the information right there. One of the things we talked about last time, and none of us were quite sure what it was, was customized toolbars for the dashboard view. It's kind of like, what the? Heck? That's right. We skipped that one. Yeah. And it's like, what the hell is that? Who wants to cover? Do we really need to? Well, to why? It? Why would you do it? it yeah. It's like, yeah. okay, well, it's cool that it's a feature, but why would I want to do it? So anytime you are working in Chief, you have your toolbars at the top of the screen. And this is where we'll give Chief a hard time for going, what the hell are you wasting your time on that shit for? Um, but anyway, they did it, and there must be a reason why, because they don't do things willy-nilly. So, so when we go to Customize Toolbar, you will notice you have a dashboard 
uh, option here now. So if you wanted to turn on some of the tools on the dashboard, you could do that. So when you go into the dashboard, you'll have icons up here at the top of the screen now. Again, why, why do we need that? I don't know. I guess uh, settings and preferences, maybe. I, yeah, I suppose. I don't know. Um, yeah. Anyway, but the dashboard's awesome because you can get to your pl last plans. You can get to training videos, see what's going on in Chiefs World. It'll tell you if there's updates. You can get to your account from the dashboard. Uh, you can tell which version of Chief you're on from the dashboard. So it, it's really there good. Some, now, you can actually increase or decrease the amount of recent files there, too. So if you're you can, you know, under, on a lot of different projects, you yep, can actually so, control how many more references. I think you can put up to 15 on there. Yeah, that's under preferences under uh, at appearance. Where was that again? I think it's got to be under general. No, it's not under general. I'm pretty sure it's under preferences. There is a... Oh gosh, where's that setting again? Or maybe that is that a default? You can, no, you can it, it's under preferences. I know it's under preferences. I've seen it before. I know I have to. Uh, but where? Uh, I wasn't general, planning maybe. to go. General planning to go here. Dash dashboard. Here it is. So dashboard show on startup or not. Uh, I like it. I like showing it, but when I'm done using, when I go to my open my plan, I want it to turn off. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that off when no other tabs are open i don't want to see my dashboard or maybe i do it's up to you and i don't see where let's see there is a setting i know there's a setting for recent one. file list it's called recent file list and mm -hmm. you can change that to it's under file management and preferences you can change that to whatever you want or i don't know how, how high you can go if you want 50 on there can you do that many that would make you really crazy probably really won't crazy. show yeah, I can go open the dashboard at any time by going into File, Dashboard. And, um, of course, I'd have to keep opening plans for that list to get longer. Right. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. Anyway, it's actually it's actually pretty handy to have a lot more of them if you're a person who doesn't keep track of where you file your stuff. Yeah. You can go find <laughs> more of them that you've worked on, right? Right. So it does have its place, I guess. Anyway, let's move on well, here. If you're working on a lot of projects at the same time, then that might yeah. be helpful. Right. To me, I don't see the value in it too much. I don't either, but it, it's there. So we just now we need to know why. Okay, display coordinate axis. Uh, that's your XYZ in the bottom. I think that's probably a setting somewhere in chief. So when you're, you, you'll see it down here now. This yeah, you can turn XY. it off for preferences. Yeah, and preferences. I kind of like it, I, um, yeah. especially when you're in a 3D view. Because now you can tell uh, which way the X and Y are. And the legs of the X and Y are pointing in the positive direction. So plus, minus. Right. So oh, yeah. That, that's move something, oh. Oh, you know, that's, in the negative direction, you'd go you know, negative X, so it would move it to the left from this view. Yeah, that's great to know. Because so if, you, if I want to move this window over to the right by using the transform replicate. So now I look at this and I can see that, okay, that's actually good. X is pointing X is pointing this way. So if I'm going to just move that window here by clicking on the window and opening Transform Replicate, I can move it X this way by just typing in the number. If I wanted to move it to the left, I would type minus whatever the number is. Now I moved it that way. So that is, that's, thanks, Renee. I didn't catch that. That's good to know. All right, moving on to our list. <clears throat> Let's just highlight that. Covered all so those organized. things. All right. Um, let's come back to the light thing here. Uh, Renee is going to do some talking about some uh, some of those cool things. Uh, client viewer. I don't know if you guys use this or not. Uh, I think for a while they weren't offering it. I'm not sure. Maybe they were and I just didn't catch it. But a client viewer looks like this. <clears throat> so if you want to actually send your plan to your client or to someone else, anybody else, and you want them to be able to look at everything but not be able to change anything other than adding text and notes, you know, and arrows, you could use the client viewer. So it's it's pretty good. I mean, it, it does allow you to do just about anything. So a client could take your project, open it, you know, walk through it, look at all the rooms, do whatever they is want. Is that web-based or they have no, to have a software is, installed? This, this is a download. They're downloading this onto their computer. 
So huh. it, it's, it's basically chief architect with everything shut off. Um, they used to have this years ago, and then I, I kind of thought they got rid of it when they added the uh, the export. Uh, yeah, I thought they did too. Yeah, that's kind of cool. But it's back. So when what you could do is when I was looking at Chief's website, and I couldn't find it. All right, so I went to chiefarchitect.com, and I was looking through all the menus. I was looking down here at the bottom of the screen where they have all this stuff listed. I, I, maybe I just missed it. All I did was I went up here and searched for client, client viewer. <clears throat> client viewer, and there it is right there. So you just click on that. You, if you're sending it to your customer, you put their email here, their name, bam, they're going to get an email. They can download the software and then you can send them your plan. Again, you want to send it by going, if you're going to send them your plan. Now, this is where the disclaimer comes in here. Okay. Be careful sending your proprietary content to someone else, especially if it's not done, especially if you don't have a signed agreement that your stuff is copyrighted and no one else can use it. All right. right. Be careful with all of that stuff. Don't just send it out willy nilly. Um, you want to cover your butt. So, um, of course, now I forget. Oh, yeah. You want to go file. You want to go back up entire plan. So whenever you're sending your plan to someone, back up entire plan. And if you're sending them the layout as well, do this from the layout page. And the layout will capture everything that they need the plan file, PDFs, pictures, textures, anything that's part of the plan, and then they can open. They won't have any error messages. So, what's some other? What's what's all the things that they can have access to when they get a get that they, from there? They can look at the 3D views. They can do cross sections. Um, oops, let me get back to it. They cannot print. Uh, actually, I think they can print. Yeah, they could print things. So, if you send them the so, layout, they'll be able to print it. Um, everything on this toolbar up here they can do or not yeah, yeah this is what it comes that's what it looks like when you when it's sent out so they can turn layers on and off <clears throat> they can switch to different plan views okay there is no layer management unless you go to to edit let's see where was it again it was under tools display options so in display options you do have the ability to turn layers on and off in the view you're looking at so so that they can do um the layer the layer hider tools up there too so they can just turn them off from there oh there we go yeah i see that what's All the right. next one next what's the icon next to it that is a swap reference so if you're you know if you're, okay. if you're up here you could use that they used to be one they used to have on there i don't think they have it much anymore but the clients can add text you know so they could draw lines and say hey you know actually no, they don't have they just have the arrow so you have to add text and then point an arrow to it so they could add text and then save it and then send that plan back to you and you would have wow. that text so that's about it so they can look at 3d they can walk through it they can uh print it uh change a few things other than that not much so it's kind of a handy thing for your clients now again if you don't like the uh, if you don't cherish the idea of sending your files to your client, uh, then just use the export uh, th uh, the chief architect 3D viewer file. Bring up a 3D and use that. Then they can walk through the model and look at everything. That way they don't get the files, they don't get the floor plans, you know, they don't get all of your hard work that you've done. So it just depends on your relationship with your clients. And that is the client viewer. So I thought I'd mention that because I don't think that gets mentioned much anymore. You guys didn't even know that was there. <clears throat> yeah, I'm like you. I thought they got rid of it when they when they brought on that other. Yeah. Doing but, it online. but certainly they hadn't. All right. So we've got some cabinet stuff. How are we doing at times? So I'm gonna. Uh, we're gonna come back to this, or we might even do that okay. next week. So, okay. um, Renee, I want you to talk a little bit about. Let's talk. Let's go back to the. We did cover this last week. There's two things I want you to recover, to do again, okay? Um, the, uh, well, should, should we skip the library thing? Let's skip the library thing for the day. I wanted Renee to talk about the uh, the library dialogue here, but let's come back to that if we have time. It, otherwise, we'll do it again next week. Maybe they'll have that patch done by then. 
for the you, you uh, keep saying next yeah. week you, you mean next week or two, two weeks, weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Stop, sorry okay next two time next, next time. time first and third friday uh so let's do that uh but renea would you talk about the the decks and how you can offset the railings on the decks and steps and, and you had created a symbol you want to go ahead and show everybody that <clears throat> You had you had created a nice symbol that you could people Let's can go download. I did. I gave that away free symbol Friday. Let's see mm -hmm. what was that even. What did I call it? I have no idea. <laughs> so that was um, just last week, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was just last week. So I mean, something you can do is you, you go talk about. It, I'll go look it up. I, I can look <laughs> up wall pipe for one, and that would get me. That would get me a filtered search. Um, or let's just look up railing. What do we have here? <clears throat> so something to note, when you search something in your library, there's um, a blank folder icon is going to be your user catalog. And a, um, a folder with a chief architect logo on it is going to be a chief architect based catalog. So I'm looking for my own railing panels. Hopefully I've got one in here. That's what we're looking for. Nope. I didn't, I didn't even organize it yet, so I don't know what it's called. <laughs> okay. Um, but I can show you how to build it anyways. So I'm going to build out a deck rail real quick, and we'll oh. open up. Cool. You added a donate button to your uh, free symbols. That way. And I, actually, a couple of people have donated, so I really appreciate that. Yeah. You guys, yeah. Um, yeah. Support your local rabbits. Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so... A couple of things we can do in our railing panels now. One is in our rail style. So I'm in the rail style panel, you can see there. And then what we have here is under the specify railing section, we can see here we've got a horizontal offset. This is new, right? So now we can offset our entire railing. You might want to do that if we're making kind of an outboard railing system, if you if you will. So I can offset this. Say we're going to offset it by five and a half inches. So you can see in the preview. I don't know if you caught that, but it jumped. Um, it jumped that five and a half inches. A couple of of other things that we can do is in the Newell's balusters panel. So I just switched to the Newell's balusters panel. Now we have a horizontal offset and a bottom offset in our new newel posts. So I can set a negative 10 inch horizontal offset and it's going to bounce that newel post offset from the railing itself. Okay. Let me set that back to zero. The other great one is if you are doing an outboard railing and, and maybe you're attaching your newel post to your fascia board um, or your rim board, then we can do a bottom offset and you so you might do something like negative 10 and you can see it it dropped that down negative 10 inches now let's see what this looks like in 3d and how this affects our railing i'm going to pull a camera here and you can see in in 2d we actually see that offset there's a series of lines happening there and then this is that railing. Now, it's only one railing that I've specified this for. And you're going to see that the longer run actually took over what the Newell board's doing. So if I replace that longer run, now we're going to see that offset shows up. So here's that negative value on our Newell post. We've dropped that railing down, right? And we've offset the entire railing itself. That is so nice to have that yeah. in this version now. God, we've been wanting that forever. It, um, it really opens up the capabilities for railings. I mean, it just it makes it a heck of a lot easier. So, it's a little bit different, but you can do that on stairways too now. the to The tools are a little different, but you can offset the whole railing on a stairway now too. Yeah. So, um, let's see. I've got this post. I'm gonna put it on the main screen here real quick, and we'll just drop the link in the comments in case you guys want to go download it. But here you go. This is an offset railing. Good example of it. Is that yours? Yeah, that's mine right oh, there. Okay. So Got it. I'm going to copy this link address and we'll just put it in the comments. Well, here, let's let me just do something real quick. Uh, John, why don't you give me a screen? Um, I, got you. I don't see your screen. There it is. There you go. Oh, okay. okay. So go to rabbitdesign.net. That's R A B B I T T. Okay. 
and this is Renee's website, and you can go there. And you're going to go to the pull down here and look for free catalog symbols, and then you're going to go. Um, you're going to hit the donate button and donate him a couple thousand dollars. <laughs> uh, again, support your local rabbit, and uh, you'll scroll down and you'll see he's got a lot of categories here. Now this is free; you don't even have to sign in. I mean, you could just go here and download them. So here's the ra uh, railing he's talking about, and you can go download that right now and get grab any of the other ones too. Do you have it set up so they all go into one user library, or or do um, you, will they I all be separate? I believe uh, no, they're all going to be in their own. They will go into the same folders that I organize my system in, um, which is kind of interesting. Next fifteen. Uh, so that is new that. then. Yeah. So it used to be anytime you'd bring us a library and it would just be in the user catalog. So you yeah. can, so people, when people add your symbols, they'll all be part of your design library. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. So uh, one of the problems I think you pointed out last time was uh, when you're viewing the filter results, um, we're not seeing the contents of this folder here. Yeah. And okay. they're, and they're fixing that. That's a bug. Yeah. Yep. So you have to click on individual things to see them. And yep. there's that railing that you're talking about with the slope bottom and stuff. And that looks great. Oh, you've got the holes and everything. Look at you. I don't see any bolts. So come on, man. They're, they're in there. They're oh, in okay. There. All right, cool. <laughs> just giving you our time. All right. So you check just, it. You just glue it on. Yeah, there we go. Uh, all right. Check it out. All right, Renee, let's get back to you. So why don't you let's switch back to you? Well, I think well, let's go on, uh, no, next subject. Pull up your PDF. Yeah, quick. yeah, yeah. That's oh. what I mean there because that's uh, you got the wrong screen up, Dan. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Um, okay, uh, we were where were we again? Well, that one we just jumped back to. I don't even remember where that was. I'd say let people play with those railing offsets, and if they have questions, we'll we'll address them. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. We're past the cabinets. Um, offsets for railings. Um, we, you did the lower neural posts. So yeah, we're good there. <clears throat> We're good there. Door size control. We also get offsets for oh, railings nice. in staircases. So go yeah. play around with that too. So you'd be able to right. do the same rail coming down your stairs. So if you wanted to, you could turn that uh, skirt board on, right? So if you yeah. had a stair that looked like it had the full board instead of cut out, you could do that. Yeah. And we're working from a um, an old new features list, believe it or not. And so they've even um, fixed some just, railing transitions and staircases. Okay. I just downloaded this this morning. So apparently they didn't update it on their website. Yeah. Oh, no, you're wrong. I'm wrong. I mean, <laughs> you're right. I'm wrong. <laughs> no, I did. I did download it, but I'm looking at the old list. So I did both. Okay. Um, so we're both right. Um, the uh, uh, Let's talk about the radius control for the stairs. Uh, that's kind of a, you know, if you do a lot of curved stairs, I suppose that'd be handy dandy. But uh, what that means is, and I was just curious where they're getting the radius from. So when you look at a stairway here, and, you know, the way you create a curved stair is just draw it with your, just grab it with your right mouse button and bend it. You can do that. But what you're bending there, um, when we go into the stairs, we can now specify a radius. So there's a new box down here, a new option down here for radius. And that radius is the outside of the curve. And the way I found that out was to um, draw three lines. So I went like this. Because the stair is made of a basically a CAD line going down the middle of the stairs, I just, I just drew some lines like this and snapped them to those spots. And then I turned them into a radius to match the stair. And I, I'd set this stair at 150 for a radius. And so if I go like this and I bent, turn that line into an arc and snap it to the outside of the stairs, and I look at the radius of that. So there's your radius, 174. And if I click on the stairs, the radius of the stairs is 174. So that's where that number is coming from. Dan, what happens if you bend the stairs the other direction? Is it still the outside? I would think it's going to be the other outside now. So now it's going to be this outside would be my guess. Let's find out. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, yep. No, maybe. Yep. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Let's mm -hmm. see. 
Yeah, because it's it's going to be a greater now. So I think that's it's just whatever the biggest radius is of the stair. That's what it's going to be. Uh, so again, if I bend that, snap it. <clears throat> 203. Yep, that's what it is. So whatever ends up being the largest. So good question. So that's what that's all about. Not a big deal, but at the same time, it is handy. You could also snap, you know, if you're doing curved stairs and you've got a, ra a wall in there at, at the right radius. So if you've taken and you've made that wall the radius you want, because we can go into a wall and we can adjust the radius on that. Just have your fair stairs follow that. So when you draw your stairs, just draw draw them next to that wall and see how they'll yeah they'll yeah they right improve up. that yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so so that's that's again that's the radius that we're looking for right there. Um, to answer Norman's comment pinned on the screen, uh, Norman that that tool is not that filter is not functioning correctly right now. Partial functionality out of it, so it's not quite working right. And they know about it and they're fixing it. So here, here's a question. Is there a way to create an offset graspable handrail on a stair? And just draw a railing. Draw a railing. Like, for, with... like you already have a rail in there, though, like for a deck stair where you got a two by six top rail laying flat. It's not yeah. grabbable. But, well, if I'm understanding right, I'm saying draw a railing that's got no balusters, is open, and has no bottom rail. And there's your. So you would have two, two rails. You'd have two rails side by side. Um, I saying on a staircase, I think, right? So right. On, on a staircase, staircase yeah. have a um, draw a railing to follow stairs, and then set it right. to have no baluster. Set it to be open and have no bottom rail, and there will be your handrail. But you still need to have a, a barrier railing. You still have to have your your railing so that people don't fall off of it. With the four, that, that would be you know um, derived from the staircase itself. You could leave the the right hand railing intact, but the one that's up against the wall and you want an offset railing, you could do that just by drawing a railing and, and okay. setting so it to open. Just drawing, so you're basically drawing two walls, you know, railings being walls, you're basically drawing two walls side by side. Yes, gotcha. Right. Yeah, railing to follow stairs. Yep. Yeah, so we're gonna click on this wall that I've just drawn and we just tell it to follow stairs, right? because it's not under the stairs right now it's next to it so we would tell that um wall which is under it's under where is that again um it's under rail style rail style yep follow stairs uh you gotta specify railing spe click specify railing top that would be a good idea follow stairs so and, you, see and how... you probably have to have it right on top of the stairs just a little bit or no oh no um, you got no, it. I, yep, no you got it I, yeah because i drew it right next yeah. to the so that railing that i that should follow up now um and i gotta turn i got to turn that railing off on the stair on the left side under rails um mules balusters i'll get the right one eventually left side and it's not following up along the stairs because that wall is not connected to anything uh, that would that, that actually makes a big difference you have to have that i think you have to have it connected to something no why is it not working oh i've got to make it a pony wall let's let's come back to that let's put that on our list we'll cover next time um we we'll talk a little bit more about stairs because they have made some a few changes in stairs all right because we don't have that we only have 15 minutes left here uh, i wanted all right um convert a train modifier again that's really silly that or simple not silly it's just it's just another thing that chief has added so if you have terrain around your plan like i do here and if i draw anything a box a line whatever and you hit the modifier icon little magic wand i call it all right. As long as that's on top of the terrain, you have a bunch more options that you can convert that into. I think in X, I think in X 14, there is, um, there is six items. So they've added some more items. That's all. So that's X 14. And this is X 15 right there. So you get more things, not a biggie, but 
you know, if you're if you're copying something from a, a DWG or something, you can click those lines and convert them really easily into landscaping items for your terrain. <clears throat> All right, um, we're going to do framing more next time. I want Renee to cover some of this presentation cool stuff. Um, so, what do we want? What do you want to start with, Renee? What are we looking at? What's the what part? Got of this? A, it's under the presentation. We've got sky model, artificial terrain, procedural, procedural grass areas, focal blur. You guys were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Soft shadows. Pick one. Why not? Um, okay. So let's. Just... I want you to show us the grass. Show us the grass and then focal blur. Okay. <laughs> so we have. Let's just add mine. There we go. Uh, let me open this view up. <clears throat> And slow my computer down for a minute. Why not? All right. So I'm going to create a terrain real quick. There we go. And you notice that terrain's <coughs> massive. Isn't that massive? Massive terrain. So, but it's really um, not that big. It's really not that big. If I click and select, which let me switch to a regular rendering mode. If I click and select, we're going to see here that in fact, that's my terrain perimeter. Small little segment here. So what we have here is in our edit active view. So let me switch to a default toolbar so we can all understand what we're looking at here. Our edit active view is this guy right here. So it's the page that with a pencil on it. Good for yep. you, you're using a zoom tool. Anyway. I even, yeah, I programmed a hotkey <laughs> to the zoom tool. Nice. Or, finally, right? <laughs> So in our dialog box for our edit active view, at the very bottom here, we've got the option to extend terrain to horizon. Check or uncheck that. If we uncheck that, we're going to see just our typical terrain perimeter. Yeah. So that's a pretty cool one. I like that one. Yeah, it's, it uh, makes your house kind of blend into the screen better uh, yeah. in your model. The other one we've got here is um, we've got procedural grass now. So we can get into our terrain submenu grass region and then say the polyline grass region for instance i'm going to draw out a polyline and what we're going to get here is procedural grass and this really will not slow down your computer but you can see here we're actually getting blades of grass we've got, so a bunch cool. of, we've got a bunch of settings for that so um i'm not going to go through all the settings i'd say play around with that and maybe next well, show come on let's make questions. the grass two feet tall i heard i heard there's a mower height you can set the mower height now yeah i would i would tell anybody to come in here and just play around with some things here it's pretty intuitive um, we've got density, we've got minimum and maximum height. So we can set this to 20 inches and make it be a really long blade of grass. And maybe we set this to 12 inches. Yeah, that's going to be a big blade of grass. We can change um, the color. So if you want more of a dry grass, you can get in here into kind of the yellows and neons. And look how quickly we're changing the look of this. Cool. And then if we want to take a look at this just in a ray trace mode, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So good job on that one, Chief. And what's great about this is this is introducing uh, procedurals, which means that we're instancing. We're instancing a, um, a mesh, if you will. And so this has implications for the future that are really cool. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, people might go, well, big deal about out grass. Yeah. Who cares about that? However, Come X16, we're going to be able to, you know, do this in, a, in other ways. We're going to yeah. utilize this technology. So that's yeah. really cool. Um, another great one, if you click on your, you know, top of the screen, we've got our adjust lights section here. If we click on that, expand it, we've got the move sun tool. So we can click and drag on the screen and start moving our sun in real time. And seeing that in preview, you can see this kicking around. Yeah. So that's a really, really cool one. And then if you move it into nighttime, the stars come if out. If you move it into nighttime, right now I have my backdrop intensity set really low because this oh. is an interior shot. But okay. yeah, you can see here I'm creating, you know, a totally different environment. And wow. we'll even get to nighttime mode. I have trouble with this sometimes, so I haven't played around with it. Um, I, yeah, I haven't either. So but I've seen Chief do it, and it looks looks cool what they do. Yeah, until, when we get to like a sunset yeah. deal. 
And, you know, again, it's one of those things people ask, well, why do they waste your time on that kind of stuff? Again, that's all part of this whole rendering engine that we're after. Yeah. Uh, and all the kind of things that they're doing to make it better and better all, each time. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's cool that they're spending time on that kind of thing. I, I would say the number one feature for X15 in terms of rendering is the denoiser, um, just hands down. Yeah. Uh, you'll notice that. I mean, I do have a very fast machine, but you'll notice that this scene ironed out all of its undersampled pixels. Really, well, really let's cool. talk about depth queuing. Oh, depth queue. That's okay. my favorite. This is awesome. This depth is a really is cool. cool. So, um, in our same kind of thing in our edit active view, that same pencil and paper icon, we have enabled depth of field and we've got a, um, an F stop value. So if you're familiar with camera settings, that would be, um, somewhat equivalent to an F stop. It's, it's, um, it's done a little bit differently in chief, but the effect is there. It still makes sense. So I'm going to set this to a value. You're doing the blurring right now. You're yeah. doing the blurring. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to set this to a value of one, which would give us a, a really strong focal blur. Now, the distance, you can set this distance and play around with this distance and you might get to what you want. But if you really want a, a good control over that distance, get back to your plan view, take your camera and the straight leader that comes out 90 degrees from your camera is actually the target distance. So if I wanted my chairs in this case in focus, I'm going to snap that leader to those chairs. And when I get back to my view here, those chairs will be in focus. Everything else will not. So this is a combination right now of the denoiser and that depth of field. So um, some very cool feature sets coming up here. I'll give you an example of um, why this might be cool. Maybe I want to just have this sync in view and in focus. I'll get back to my plan view. I'll grab my camera. I'll bring this leader back just to the sync itself. And we'll get back into that live view. And we're going to see that just the sync itself is getting into view. And my focal blur setting is set really high right now. So let's just set that back to something like a 2.2. And we're getting a little bit more in view here. So you can get some kind of editorial marketing shots if you want to yeah. out of Chief, which is pretty wild. Yeah, uh, does that have anything to do with? Blur. Does that have anything to do with the elevations? When you're doing an elevation, you can kind of blur out the background, but leave like the room edition cl crystal clear. That's but, um, so. There's a depth cue. We don't have it in elevations. I okay. can show you. I can show you tricks for that. Um, the trick for that would be that we're going to get into that edit active view again, and um, this isn't perfect, but it it can give you an artistic look. Set your field of view down to. Um, 10 and that's going to really zoom this in and i would say back this out do your edit active view again and um in our uh let's see our positioning panel now we're going to make sure that we're at 180 degree angle and that our tilt angle is zero and that's going to make that's giving us an elevation camera if you will and then if we get into our 3d menu and um, we get into our camera view options, we've got the cross section slider. And so I'm gonna cut this building. And now I'm, I'm kind of faking an elevation view that's, that's utilizing that depth of field and, um, and you know, utilizing the denoiser and everything like that. Okay, so sure. you know, kind of an artistic look. Can I show that in elevation mode though? When you go to elevation mode, that's where depth of cue really shines, especially like if you're showing the details in a kitchen of like an island and you want to show the cabinets behind it, but you want them to fade out. So you're that's, talking about it, a different feature and that's depth cue. That's depth cue. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're you right now you're just doing the shape the um this that is just depth thing. of field. Depth yeah. Cue, so, yeah. Okay. And on the, so the depth cue is um, another new feature. And let's just get to, there we go. So now I'm just taking a wall elevation camera and maybe you want, you know, a standard, standard view if you want. We've got, let's see, where does that live? I know where it lives on my It's under feed. three, it's under CAD. 
and then it's under it's under CAD. And, That's camera view options. No, 3D. So it's under 3D, it's 3D camera, camera view, options. view options. Depth Q. Yeah. Yeah. So once we turn mm -hmm. this on, we can click Use mm -hmm. Depth Q, and we've got a start and end slider. Now, by default, these will stay in sync, right? So yeah. So, so now you just you here you're showing you're putting a new island in or new peninsula, but you're not changing the back wall. Yeah, would be right. kind of kind of one use of that. So I'll show you what happens you when the, we uncheck. If we uncheck keep start and end in sync, we can um, kind of fade in that okay. background just a little bit. So can, and can then you use can, that in a vector view or is that strictly a render view? No, it's um, vector view. I, I use think it in it's, vector view. I th yeah, it's definitely both because we have okay. that mm -hmm. ability in in um Okay. Yeah, there it is. This isn't just a wall elevation. This is for any kind of cross-section elevation camera as well. Got it. Yeah, That's what so I was asking. Okay. It's a nice look, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I right, use it we're in an elevation camera. Yeah, okay. I use it in Sorry. my construction documents so that way I can show dimension details, with gotcha. how far things are, and that way you can still see what's happening behind, but you can take it out. And what I like about it, John, can you let me show my camera real my screen real quickly and I can show you what this you one, need to, what an elevation you, looks you like. You have to hit the present button. I have to hit present. Oh, okay. Got it right there. Hold on. Let me do that. Okay. We've got about five minutes left here, guys. So, yeah. Hang on. Um, make this um, quick. Okay. And I don't even know how to get there. How do I get to that? Why don't you find that and we'll, well, then we'll come on to that. Uh, t tell me about soft shadows. Tell, just tell mm -hmm. us when you're ready. Uh, soft shadows. Yeah, they've just improved soft shadows. Um, there's not a whole lot you're you're going to notice. Your rendering quality is just going to look great. Um, again, I would just get back to the um, denoisers is the the biggest feature in X15. So you tell everybody a little bit about that. Just talk about that for a second. In um, in and a 3D is... view like this, uh, it might be if you're bringing over templates from X14, your settings might not be optimal to take advantage of the new denoiser. So right. what I would tell you to do is get into your rendering technique options, which if you're using the extended toolbar, that's at the top of the screen, your renderings, and then technique options. And make sure to cap your live samples, denoise when complete let's just take a look at this denoise when complete and i have mine set very very low because i like very quick looks and then i'll come in here and change it when i need a better quality but uh, chief has this i think by default out of the box in x15 set to 50. so it'll take 50 yeah. samples once 50 samples are complete then it will um, denoise the scene which means that all these white specks which are under sampled pixels uh, the denoiser looks at those pixels, looks at the neighboring pixels, makes its best guess, and will fill them in. And, and it does a really great job. And that uh, the denoiser is on your CPU. So your graphics card's doing the ray tracing. Your CPU will do the denoiser. And a big thing to note is that works on walkthrough videos. That's a huge thing to That's note. That's cool. So That's cool. if you haven't seen some of the stuff mm -hmm. I've been posting on um, my sites, You've probably missed that I've been posting a bunch of denoised videos, and those videos uh, can look really sharp. So we'll just show this one real quick. I mean, that's is that is that Windows cool. only, Renee? Uh, yes, that's Windows only. Sorry, Mac people, but I uh, do have methods for you to get a hold of this software if you're on a Mac. Um, just reach out to me. So. This is pretty much hardware specific too. If you're running a new modern computer with a RTX 3000, 4000 series card, this is going to work pretty well. Yep. If you're running yep. something a little older, um, 2000 I, series will still work. Well, I've no, done actually, it on my. This is. I've done it on my 1070, and it helps. It helps a lot. It, this. Um, no, this I will take make, that back. I'm doing it on my laptop. Sorry. Um, yeah, this will make some of those really old cards, like the um, the Max Q three thousands, which are slower than a thirty fifty. Um, those will bring those back into relevance, believe it or not. So okay, cool. Yeah. All right, uh, Robin, you have your thing ready to show. I don't know how to show it. I sent it to you. I sent you a picture in your email. If you just open your email, you'll see what I think. This is really great, especially if you're doing kitchen and bath designing right. and elevation details. This is um, this is the depth queue, and I like how I can really separate out information on it. Um, as soon as you can find it, 
sorry guys i'm let me, let me show this and then renee why don't you prepare to show the dotted foundation lines mm. you familiar with that one yep all right that is one of my favorites so just to share with this the kind oh, of little detail that i like about it showing my screen yeah. here yep, yeah yep, you yep. Are, we are showing your screen for yep. people are doing kitchen elevations if you notice on the left hand side you can see the wall cabinets and the base cabinets but behind that's the refrigerator but that refrigerator is away from the island so i'm able to show the countertop um the walk space dimension right, right? which is important yeah. to have so and really i can add control well and you're... i need that dimension that's between the two areas right. and i don't want it dimensioning off of that ca that tall cabinet that's behind the cabinets on the left hand side and that's really helpful this is going to be really a lovely option so i can still show the details we were able to do it before in camera control but now we have the control so much easier um on elevation and you can modify it as you're working on it yeah that's cool that so, looks yeah. great yeah very nice example thank you all right renee you want to take it home with the show dotted lines on the foundation thing here yeah i'm trying to get a couple of little um elevation markers here real quick so that we can see a, a sloped terrain uh, let's just do this guy here. So this is under, if you're looking at the PDF uh, on the old one, I'm looking at it's under presentation and it's the last item, hidden lines below grade. This is cool, what Chief did here. In the past, what we used to have to do is I'd draw a, a box with white hatch, white, white angled lines and I'd put it over the foundation and it would look like dotted lines below grade. We don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. I have one feature request on this uh, that I'm hoping that they do in the future, which is I don't want to see shadow below the grade. So mm -hmm. I hope they get rid of that. But um, so if I turn shadow off, this looks pretty good. So yeah. what you're seeing here is this is just a black and white elevation. Let me just turn on color real quick. But anything that's mm -hmm. below grade. Below the is, terrain. Excuse me. Below the terrain is a, a dashed line. Right. So let me turn the color back off. Show them how to set that. I think that reads pretty well. So how we set that? Probably guessed it. Edit active view again. Absolutely. And what we're going to see here is in the panel here, we've got a below grade panel. Yeah, baby. That below is grade cool. panel. Yeah. This is where we get to override the color. And uh, that means override the color of the particular um, instance that's um, of, of some kind of mesh that's below grade, be it foundation, be it you know some deck posts, something like that. Who knows? Um, walls, if you've got a build out basement, you can override the color of that here. Um, I'll just choose red just to show you. And then we can change the uh, line style of that below grade line. And we can change that, the line weight as well. Yeah. And then we either want to affect lines below the terrain per perimeter, or we might want to set this at an absolute height. And so when we come back into the shot and turn my color on, you can see here now we've got a red dash line that's below grade. So that's a really cool one. We've been asking for that forever. A lot of us have come up with workarounds to make that work. But yeah, there you go. workarounds is what it was. Um, but now it's built in and piece cake. So cool. We've got a few questions about laptops. Um, let's talk about that for a second. Then we'll call it a day. Uh, the uh, uh, Someone is mentioning a high-end Dell laptop, that would be the Alienware line at Dell. Uh, I run Alienware. I know other people running Alienware. They love them. They'll range mm -hmm. in price from three to three to five grand, probably, for the good ones. Um, I, are there? Does the Dell have the forty nineties yet in their in their cards? Do you guys know? I don't know. Uh, um, I'm not sure. Or forty eighties. If you go to Dell.com and go to their uh, Alienware under under uh, laptops, it would be. I'm not showing my screen. Why don't you show my screen, John? I got um, it. Okay, yeah, thank you. So if we go to, um, oops, I don't want that. Let's see, Alienware. Let's just turn that on, product line, and look at some of their laptops. What are they showing? 4080s. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so three grand. I mean, that would be a kick-ass computer right there. 
512. I, I, I tend to go a little bigger, bigger on the SSD. 32 gig is fine. 64 would be maybe better. I don't know if we need that much or not. Uh, we don't really need that much so, um, machines. Yeah. Um, there's a 3070 Ti. Then if we jump up into the... No, I just search around on the... I, I just like the Alienwares. Now, if you're looking for more budget computer, that still will do a good job. Um, I do like Micro Center. Micro Center does a good job with different brands on on their uh, cards. I uh, just had a client bought a, I think it was a $1,200 Asus, I think, with a RTX 3070 uh, with 30, 16 gig of RAM and, and 512 hard drive, 17 inch, and it works great. And so, Micro Center has storefronts. If you're in an area where there is one, go check yeah. it out. Yeah, just search uh, search the different cities. I, yeah. We have one. I have one 20 minutes from me. I love that place. No, we love. don't have one over here, but it's, yeah. it's, my, it's my candy store. So um, Cyber Power PC is another one I, I recommend. <clears throat> so check them out. Uh, you know, feel free to contact us, any of us, if you have more questions about laptops. But yeah, you're looking for that the graphics card is important in the chief world. Uh, the RTX 3000 plus series, 4000 now. Uh, I think for the difference between the 3080 Ti and the 30 and the 4080 is probably not that huge, maybe 10% boost, but it's my understanding the 4090s give you a much bigger boost. That's that's my understanding. Again, 32 gig of RAM, uh, 512, two or one terabyte solid state. You got to have a solid state drive. I don't think they make them without solid states anymore, do they? Uh, you could always add on a other hard drive that if you want to store more things on it. I like 17 inch monitors. So it's up to you what you like. Uh, I don't know. Just the, the new laptops are just, they're nice. Mm -hmm. There's another so, bo box. Yeah, a box as well. Yeah. What's that? A box, B O X X. It's a great Chad's brand. Chad's desktop is a, is a box, I think. All right. Uh, what about, what about like the A4500? card and stuff do you guys have any comments about those i don't know anything about um i think um, the big difference is um onboard memory amount i think yeah i'm not sure i'm not sure actually okay anyway all right guys we're done we're already over time so everybody thank you for being here today i hope that was helpful thanks we'll, guys we're gonna hit this up again next uh next time two weeks from now uh we'll continue talking about some more of these uh new features we'll uh and we'll jump into that. And then the week, the time after that, I've got a guest coming on. Uh, we're going to start playing mind games. So, uh, which is actually a really good. We're, we're going to talk, we're going to take that topic Kevin talked about a little bit. And we're going to oh, take, okay. a, we're gonna take okay. a little further uh, with some, a, a really cool guest that I've got coming. So I'll have more information next time about that. And we'll just keep her going. You guys, thanks for everything. We'll see you Thanks, next guys. time. Bye, everyone. Have a good week. See ya. Bye.